Hi. In this video, I'll show you how to use Synthesizer to control multiple iPad synths from a single sequence. And I'll also show you how you can add variety to a sequence by using Synthesizer's pattern morphing features. All right, to get started, let's have a look at our configuration in Audio Bus. So here you can see that we've got Synthesizer, and it's our MIDI controller. And we'll be using Synthesizer to control three synth applications. Each one of our synth applications is feeding its audio output into a mixing utility called Mimix, which you see along the bottom here. Now, we're not using any of the sound produced by Synthesizer directly, and the reason that I have it included in this Audio Bus preset is because all of the apps in the preset will be available in the Audio Bus taskbar, and that makes navigation between the apps a lot easier. All right, so let's have a quick look at the configuration for our synthesizers. Here's Lorentz, and I'm going to just kind of pick a preset to use for our sequence um, in Synthesizer. We'll use Poly 2, and let's have a quick look at the MIDI configuration by tapping this gear icon. For MIDI input, note that we're getting our uh, MIDI input from Synthesizer, and we'll be using MIDI channel number 2 for Lorentz. Okay, let's have a look at Propeller Head 4. To get to the MIDI settings, we tap the gear icon. And you can see that our MIDI input is coming from Synthesizer. And for Thor, we're using MIDI channel number three. Now let's have a look at ISEM by Arturia. And for ISEM, we're using MIDI channel number one. And our MIDI input, again, is coming from Synthesizer. OK, now let's go over to Synthesizer and have a look at our sequence. So here you can see um, the synthesizer screen, and you've got a control panel along the bottom where you access all of your sequence parameters um, and other configuration settings. And then the majority of the screen is taken up by your sequencing grid. You, you'll note that the sequencing grid is carved up into a few color-coded sections, and each one of these color-coded sections can be configured to transmit data over a separate MIDI channel. And that's how we have it set up in this case, and this is what enables us to control multiple synths from a single sequence. So let's go ahead and play this and hear how it sounds. Okay, now let's have a look at the MIDI configuration that we're using. You access the MIDI settings by tapping the MIDI button along the bottom. And the third uh, item down from the top is called channel mapping. And to get to your channel mapping settings, you tap the arrow next to it. And this is where you can configure each colored section of the grid to send data out over a separate MIDI channel. So you can see that the first section, our first octave of the grid, this purple color is transmitting using uh, MIDI channel number one. You can change that, of course, by just tapping the plus or minus buttons. The second octave, which is the pink section of our grid, is transmitting using MIDI channel number three, which is going out to Thor. And then the orange and green sections of the grid are sending data out over MIDI channel number two, which is being sent out to Lorentz. And a couple more things to note here. Um, under channel mapping, you see Synthesizer Sound Engine. And note that we have that turned off because we don't want Synthesizer to produce any of its own sound because we're using it to control other synths. And then under Destinations, that's where you can change the synths that you want to send MIDI data out to. And of course, we're sending MIDI data out to Thor, ISEM, and Lorenz. OK, um, let's take a quick look at Mimix, and I'll show you how that works. So Mimix, again, is a mixing utility. You can feed audio from up to eight applications into Mimix and control it as a single mix. And then each application has controls for level and panning. All right, so let me turn the level down on Lorentz and Thor, and I'll play the sequence and then just layer each synth in one by one. So there we hear our bass line coming from ISEM. Now let me bring the level up on Thor. And finally, I'll bring up our simple lead line, which is being played by Lorentz. Okay, so that's how you can use Synthesizer to send data out to multiple synthesizers. Now let's look at how we can use Synthesizer's morphing features to add some variety to the sequence. To get to the sequencer settings, you tap the sequence button in the bottom control panel. And on the right side of the screen, you'll see a red morphing section. 
And here is where all of uh, the controls are accessed for um, injecting mutations into a sequence. You've got a couple of different ways that you can do it. One is by introducing randomization into the sequence, and you get a couple of sliders that you can use to control um, the, how the randomization is applied. And then you also have a series of lifelike uh, algorithms. There are a couple of built-in rules, and you can define your own rule sets as well. And then the last section is where you can select the section of the sequence that you want the mutations to apply to. You can select a subset of the grid by just tapping select and selecting a custom area of the sequence grid to apply changes to, or you can apply changes to the entirety of your sequence. So let's do that. Now I'm going to use the randomization function to add some variety to our sequence. And I'm going to turn the probability down a little bit. And so let's just do maybe yeah, right around 20%. And so that um, is the probability that any given step is going to be changed on an iteration through the sequence. And then you have a slider for X and a slider for Y. X is going to inject randomization into the rhythm, the horizontal placement of steps in the sequence grid. And then the Y slider is going to influence the amount of change to the pitch. So let's just go with something pretty conservative here. So we'll um, be a little bit maybe more aggressive on the rhythm and see if we can go a little bit um, less aggressive on the pitch. Um, so we've got a 19% chance of steps changing. We'll shift the rhythm by up to three steps um, and the pitch will change for a given step up to uh, two steps. Okay, so let's play this and see what happens.